Unrest continuing in American cities. The Chicago police releasing body cam footage that shows 13-year-old Adam Toledo was armed when a police officer told him to drop his weapon. The cop then fired one shot, killing him. The president of Chicago's police union says the shooting was justified. It's a good reason why the officer only shot one. He would have been justified to shoot multiple times. We're trained to basically shoot two and reassess. That didn't even happen because by the time he had shot the first time in justification, he realized the gun was out of his hand. He didn't shoot a second time. AOC is claiming prosecutors lied about, quote, police killing a child. Another squad member says the cop, quote, executed him. And the White House is weighing in on the situation. It is uh, certainly um, chilling and a reminder uh, that across the country uh, there are far too many communities uh, where there is violence that is impacting uh, uh, that, that too often in this country law enforcement uses unnecessary force too often resulting in the death of black and brown Americans. And while authorities in Minnesota prepare for another night of protests, a BLM activist is defending the anarchy, tweeting, quote, I'm definitely in the camp of defending rioting and looting as a legitimate, politically informed response to state violence. All right, well, that's loony. All right, Geraldo, go to Chicago here. It's Hi, 3 o'clock in the morning. Police, hi, responding to shots fired. You have a 13-year-old running down an alleyway in the dark uh, with the handgun. It's bang, bang, happens like that. Police say he was a member of the Latin Kings. Fox hasn't confirmed that, but that neighborhood was a stronghold for that gang. How do you see what happened in this tragic situation? We're talking about a barely 13-year-old developmentally disabled special needs kid who is in seventh grade, a Latino kid in seventh grade, in seventh grade, who's shot in the eye. There's a lot of things, a lot of layers there, sociological and so forth. But you understand that this is why black and brown families are terrified of encounters with police. This is why the relationship between black and blue is is if not severed, severely damaged and dangling by a thread. Parents are as fearful of police as they are of gangbangers or crooks. It shouldn't be that way. This is a baby. You look at his pictures, he's a baby. Yes, he, he, he went wrong and no dad was around and you could have all of those other uh, you know, reasons for what happened for him to be out at two in the morning with a 21 year old seasoned criminal. But the fact of the matter remains that a barely 13 year old kid with special needs, Latino kid, brown kid with special needs is dead by a cop's bullet, Jesse. Um, one of the things that I think, you know, it's very hard to watch that tape. I watched it from a number of different angles on different on the different officers who were there. It, one of the things that just really comes uh, so clear, I think, when you watch it is not only the tragedy of the death of this boy, which is heartbreaking to watch. It also just brings home, I think, to anybody who sees it, how dangerous, how frightening the work is of these police officers, the situations that they run into. Yep. You can hear them breathing and running. And um, I, I just think that, you know, yeah. that it's important to see both sides of, of the environment and how uh, how difficult and how stressful these environments are on, on all sides. Listen, I, to, to Martha's point, listen, you have to look at the whole picture. And that, that's true. I mean, law enforcement is dying in these engagements. And if there's one thing that Joe Biden and all these activists, whether it's AOC and Tlaib and, and, and Black Lives Matter, the message they should be given is follow the direction of law enforcement. When you're pulled over, don't run. Um, if you got a gun, stop, drop it, and follow the direction of law enforcement, whether it was uh, Adam Toledo or, or Dante Wright or even George Floyd. The consistent theme with this is they're not following the direction of law enforcement. And when you don't, bad things happen. And by the way, maybe to Geraldo's earlier point before the press conference, 
we do have to look at the whole picture. And why wasn't Adam, why wasn't he in school? Why was he out at 2 o'clock in the morning? Why did he have a gun? Why was he part of a gang? Where were his parents? Where were social services? And why in the hell hasn't the teacher unions opened up their schools so he was in bed going to school the next day instead of being a gang member? And I don't know the stats on this, Jesse, but I guarantee you there's more kids in gangs since COVID than there was before because there's nothing for them to do because teachers have shut them, shut them down and kids are getting hurt. Yeah, especially in Chicago. Geraldo, you'd like to respond yeah. to that if you will. I, I think that, I, I, I think Sean makes excellent points and I love cops and I think the cops have a very tough job and they risk everything every time they go to work. But I beg you to understand the anguish in, in the families of color who are watching the news on a nightly basis, looking at their child and worrying when that child goes out that that child may never come back and fe fearing the cops, not the way so many, you know, uh, in maybe in, in other neighborhoods, people look at cops, oh, our friends, are, oh, what a relief, there's the police officer. That's not the case in many areas in this country and all the protests that you saw last summer. And, uh, y you know, we've emphasized the riots and the looting and condemned them appropriately. But that represents a real reflection of the anguish and rage about police violence that's out there. When you see this video and they, and they parse it, and then if you continue the video, I don't think we've shown it, and you see the 13-year-old kid with special needs and, a, and no father at home to answer wow. Sean's point, bleeding from his mouth as his life goes out. We, if we don't, if we, the most respected news organization in the nation perhaps, don't recognize the anguish of the people watching the 13-year-old life going out of his, his body, then we, we don't deserve the ratings. We don't deserve it. We have to be Geraldo, sensitive well, was, to the way they see life. Go ahead, Janine. Geraldo. <laughs> Okay, Geraldo, the problem is that Adam Toledo, for whatever his problems were, and as a DA and as a judge, that was not the issue before me. These police officers make a split-second decision, kill or be killed. He saw a gun, in less than a second, he made a, sh he made a shot. Now, the, afterwards, we found out that Adam Toledo had gunshot residue on his hand. That tells me that he was shooting, and that was a call that was made a few seconds above so stop with the namby pamby stuff what we've got to understand is that there's a war on the streets and if you cared about the cops who go out every day and risk their lives you've got to give them the right to defend themselves when they're confronted with a gun less than one second they have to make a decision and that police officer only shot once and he ran and called for help and he immediately said to the kid where are you shot to try to help him but don't tell me in the middle of the night at three in the morning after shots are fired and kids got a gun we're supposed to worry about whether or not he's psychologically impaired or he's 13 years old he is a criminal this is a war this is not the time to feel sorry for anybody stay off the streets and stay out of the gangs and put the guns down and you won't have this problem okay martha please might you get the final I, you know, word I, I mean i i just want to say that there, there's nobody geraldo who doesn't feel the pain of the loss of that child that I, I think you're right and i think janine is right i mean you have to be able to understand both sides of this equation uh those police officers he could have very well been the one who did not go home that night nobody knew how when, when you start running in the street with guns something bad is going to happen and i think sean makes a great point as well um the message that needs to come to all of these people is that you should not resist arrest nobody wants the outcome of what happened in that you know you also watch that police officer he walks away he walks around in circles he sits down you know what is going through his mind he is shocked and yep. in pain from what has just happened and that moment where he goes and hovers over the 13 year old boy tries to find yes. the bullet wound calls in an yes. excruciatingly painful way for a medic yeah. to come and save this kid's life you can see the pain and anguish on all sides of that situation and it's it's graphic to watch but it's important to see the reality of what's happening on both sides mm -hmm.